Hello everyone, this is Poison Potion, or PP for short, and welcome to my Wilderness Expansion discussion video. Today- What? What do you mean I can't just talk about the wilderness? Hello and welcome to the OSRS Weekly Recap. This week we had some long-awaited clue rewards that just got adjusted and some news about a new big-ticket weapon that's being proposed for the upcoming Raids 3, Tombs of a Mascot. To start things off though, we have the equipment rebalance. No nerfs or buffs to any of these weapons, just adjustments of their required level to equip. For most people, these level requirements don't mean much, but for some limited account builds, they may have a significant impact. In other news, the long-awaited Pole 76 changes to clue scrolls have been implemented. Rarity of Third Age items from Elite Clues now fit proportionally between Hard and Master Clues. This affects already existing caskets, so if you have a stack of 100 saved up for this, you can finally open them. In addition, they have added Clue Scrolls to the Hollowed Sepulchre. These Clue Scrolls are given as an additional reward to the loot that you usually receive. Bryophyta's Staff, as well as the Essence, have become available in free play and Mossy Keys, as well as Giant Keys, have also become stackable. Next up, we have the addition of Rune Light to the Jagex Launcher. All you need to do is click on the drop-down menu next to the play button and click on Rune Light. Installing the launcher provides a very convenient way to remember your account and automatically log in, so if you still don't have it yet, you can click on the link in the description below to download it. Now onto the spicy stuff. Raids 3 Reward Changes Jagex heard everyone's feedback and decided that the big ticket item from Raids 3 wasn't big enough. After all, Raids 1 and 2 both had massive upgrades in the Twisted Bow and the Scythe of a Tur. So, with Raids 3, they're proposing a brand new mage weapon that may just put the magic combat style to the forefront. Introducing the Shadow of Temekin a heavy-hitting two-handed mage staff that attacks in a five-tick cycle. The biggest thing about this new staff is the two passive effects that interact with your gear while you have the staff equipped. The first passive effect triples the accuracy of all your magic boosting gear, and the second effect also triples your magic strength up to a cap of 100%. This means that if you use all the current best-in-slot mage gear with the staff, your magic strength will go from 23% to 69%. Now that's a nice amount of damage. The plan with the new staff is to increase the incentive to bring more mage switches for different types of PVM. As with the staff, every piece of mage gear becomes very important. These are some of the DPS increases that the new weapon would bring. Keep in mind that all of these calcs are with the best gear possible and are all off task. As you can see, the staff even out DPSs the Twisted Bow at Commander Ziliana, a boss where mage has never been considered viable. Up next, it's Osmonton's Fang. The Fang special attack has remained the same, but the stats have been changed. Instead of having 175 accuracy and 115 strength, it will instead have 105 accuracy and 103 strength, but it will roll its accuracy table twice, making it an even more consistent melee weapon. Here's a damage calculation comparing the Grazi Rapier and the previous Fang. Rapier still remains the king at low defense levels, but the new Fang overtakes it the tankier the target becomes. Most people have had a chance to use the new Karis Partisan as a reward for completing the new quest beneath Cursed Sands. This new weapon does quite a number on Scarab, Beetle, and Calphite creatures, but it seems like with the new raid, you can make it even stronger with these special jewels. There are a number of jewels that can be equipped within the raid itself, but one of those jewels you'll be able to use outside of the raid. This jewel is called the Breach of Scarab and will add an additional 33% accuracy boost against Calphite, Scarabs, and Beetles, making it the new best in slot for killing the Cal Calphite Queen, or just doing a regular Calphite Slayer task. Lastly, we have another completely new item, the Thread of Elodinus. This magical thread, when used with a rune pouch and a needle, will allow you to add four runes to your pouch instead of three. An additional rune pouch cannot be used in conjunction with this, but you can store multiple threads in your bank just in case you lose one of your upgraded pouches. The thread would be a fairly common drop, so you shouldn't have to worry about going too dry on it. Of course, all of these proposed reward changes will be pulled, so make sure you're on the lookout for this sometime soon. In the meantime, why don't we talk about Group Iron Man? Many players have been going hard at standing alone with friends. However, some groups unfortunately ended up burning out, leaving a few players in the group still wanting to play but unmotivated because they don't have a full team. Introducing Unranked Group Iron Man. Unranked Group Iron Man allows people from other teams to leave their group and join another. Doing this will cause that group to be removed from the high scores and their hardcore Group Iron Man status to also be removed if there is one. You can expect this update to be out May 25th. Keeping on the subject of Group Iron Man, they have another bit of content coming your way. Group Iron Man Competitions 
During a two-week period, group Ironman teams will compete against each other in a bossing point-based system. These points would hold no in-game value, cannot be traded, and would only be available for the duration of the competition. At the end of the two-week period, they'll randomly pick 10 lucky groups and award them with membership. Groups will see an increased chance of winning the more points they have accumulated. Nine of the ten groups awarded will receive one year of membership for all members, and one lucky group will receive the grand prize of lifetime membership. If you'd like to participate, you can sign up in the in-game Group Ironman settings menu. They're wanting to start the competition on May 25th, so make sure you and your friends are all ready. All Group Ironman accounts are eligible for this competition, whether they be ranked, unranked, or hardcore groups. Keep in mind, however, that you will not be able to leave and join a new group during the competition. Lastly, we have some more news about the upcoming smithing minigame Giant's Foundry. XP rates have been tripled across the board, as well as the new Colossal Blade getting a buff. It now requires 60 attack and has increased max hits based on how large the monster you're fighting is. Jagex says that this will make it a little bit better than the Dragon Scimitar if the monster you're fighting is big enough. Well, that just about does it for this week. Again, I am Poison Potion, or PP for short. If you'd like to check out my channel, you can do so in the description, and make sure to also check out the next recap coming out next week, done by Zoe Pancakes. We'll see ya.